in order to see how this is going to play out, let's take a look at a particular example. So we've got now a very small market for these used cars. Um, I'm also going to ask you to assume that all used cars are identical for this exercise, which I know is not true, but um, is a pretty harmless assumption for us to make here. So we've got all of these identical used cars available. They're all priced at $5,750. We've got five people who are interested in buying a car. Those are their respective willingnesses to pay. One person's willing to pay $8,000, one's willing to pay $7,250, and so on. So what I've done here next is I've lined those up on the graph. I've formed essentially a demand curve out of these data. So what are these points showing us? They're saying there's one person willing to pay $8,000, two people are willing to pay at least $7,250, three people are willing to pay at least $6,500, and so on. And then I went ahead and joined those points just because, um, well, it makes it look prettier, more or less, makes it more look more like the demand curves that we're used to. Okay, so given that then, how can we show the surpluses that each of these people can obtain in the market? Well, what we can do is draw a line across at the price they're actually going to have to pay, and this is going to be tricky because my line drawing skills are kind of suck. Uh, but there we go, there's, there's the price that those people would be willing to pay. If we have a look at this person, this person would be willing to pay 8000 They actually have to pay 5750 so this distance here, this is their surplus that they can obtain. But now we're going to use a, um, a little trick that we've learned in a couple of previous um, lectures which is that areas on the graph are dollar amounts. So this, this height here, this amount of surplus is 8,000 minus 5750 or $2,250. We want an area on this graph equal to 2,250 that we're going to say is this person's surplus. And so the trick we're going to use here is to just sort of complete a box here. So now this box has height, 2250, right? And width, 1, multiply those together, we get 2250. That is our uh, surplus for that first person. Here's a version that looks a little bit prettier. 2250 for the first person, that's their surplus. The difference between the amount they would have been willing to pay and the amount they actually have to pay. And then multiplied by 1 to give us this area to represent their surplus. Second person, 1500 Their willingness to pay was 7250 They actually paid 5750 They get 1500 in surplus. Third person, 750 Our fourth person is an interesting one to know to figure out what to do with. Our fourth person was willing to pay exactly the market price. So now whether they trade or not, they can't get any surplus, right? We typically make the assumption that they do go ahead and trade. Um, there's a couple of technical reasons for that, but mostly the math works out a little bit easier if we do that. Um, so we would just assume that they would trade, but they would still obtain no surplus. Our fifth person definitely can't get a surplus, right? They're only willing to pay 5000 for the car, and the car costs 5750 There's no way that they can trade. These areas taken together we call the consumer surplus in this market. It's the total amount of surplus over all of the buyers in this market. For each person we calculated it as the benefit that they would get from trading, their marginal benefit minus their actual price. And we did that for all of the people in the market who were going to trade. Almost never are we going to see a graph like this. Instead, we're almost certainly going to see it with hundreds, thousands of people engaging in this market. Think about what's going to happen to these surpluses in that case. They're still going to have like the, the corner up here on the demand curve, but now all these boxes, all these, these rectangles, are only going to be one wide. And as we get more and more and more people along here, a greater quantity that's going to be traded, 
these boxes are going to end up looking very, very thin, kind of like a very thin staircase. And in fact, we just draw it as this triangle here, where in theory it's made up of all of these boxes that are exactly as tall as the difference between the demand curve and the price. But generally we'll just say that's equal to this triangle and call this triangle here the consumer surplus in the market. In words, we say it's the area under the demand curve and above the price that the buyers have to pay.